sometimes we're not able to receive the things or be in the vibration of things that we want because there's still someone that we need to forgive. And that who struck me. If you have a father that was absent, you should watch this video. If you have a father that was present but just wasn't able to show up in the best way that you feel possible in your development, this video is for you. If you had a father that was in the military and maybe because of those dynamics wasn't able to be the best father for you, this video is for you. Hopefully with what is shared today, we build a sense of community. You get to know a little bit more about what's inside of me and we can talk about things and actually heal and move forward. Um, you know, when someone experiences an absent parent, father or mother, there is a hole there. Whether or not you choose to acknowledge that, it's still gonna be there, but how we choose to fill that hole is our responsibility. So I hope with what this video entails, you're able to get real about the things that you need to actually move forward. And maybe this video will help you recognize different patterns in your life to help you move forward and actually get the things that you want. I watched this video and this guy was talking about sometimes we're not able to receive the things or be in the vibration of things that we want because there's still someone that we need to forgive. And that who struck me and that is a big theme for this video. So let's get started. Four years ago, I had this spiritual awakening. Um, with every situation that I had in my life as I was living alone in a different city, it brought a change in me that eventually I started speaking about and my testimony was something that the collective kind of resonated with and with my words and the things that I would write, it was like I was doing these many things and writing down these many monologues and somehow I was able to reach the depths of people and the only way I was able to do that is because I would reach the depth within myself. But this whole journey started because I was trying to mend this resentment wound that I had with my father. If you're anything like me, for so many years, if you grow up without a father or any parent, as you get older, it's just something that you wake up and accept, right? Um, I grew up without a father, like millions of other people in the world. And because I didn't really feel like I missed out, I had a mother that loved me. She taught me literally the best. I never felt like I was unloved. You know, there was nothing that he's actually taken away from me outside of his presence that I never really felt like I needed him. I've spent so many years without it. You could honestly feel within your heart, um, out of sight, out of mind, I've moved on. This is not important for me. I felt the same way, but it wasn't until I entered the adult relationships in my life that I realized the silent resentment that I had towards my father being missing and all of the years spent of him not even caring about what I had going on in my life kind of manifested into this lack of respect and empathy towards men, especially black men. So to be my raw, true, authentic self, before the healing stage of my life, I was a little jaded on Father's Day. And it wasn't just Father's Day, it was any time that I saw fatherhood. It wasn't that I was jealous, but I was just like, wow, do men really care? Do they really have the capacity to love like that? And what is it within me that just isn't able to see it, understand it, or feel it? I just had this feeling like, you know what, I don't think guys are emotionally intelligent enough to cultivate relationships for the things that they want. I was confused, really. I didn't know that men had the capacity to love like that. When I was a kid, trying to digest all of these feelings, um, it was a lot, you know? I would 
ask myself so many questions about why I wasn't able to receive fatherhood or why I was so without. Now I know it's just a part of my journey and I'm grateful for having this perspective because I'm honestly I'm okay and I just know what it's like and I'm able to be of service for people that have the same experience too. But when I was a little kid, I developed so many insecurities about my academics, the way that I looked, and all of those things were probably the reason why my father didn't care, you know. And of course that was not true, but who could tap into the mind of a little girl and be able to get her to express those things when she probably couldn't really articulate that for herself. Moving forward. I do want to say shout out to every friend that I experience with a father because a lot of my fatherhood examples or samples of fatherhood that I did have came from just being a bystander to my friends experience of their fathers and little lessons that they would share with me kind of in the room and I just am so extremely grateful for those examples because I learned a lot, a lot from my mother but I just, I got what I needed when I needed it, and I am extremely grateful for that, so thank you so much. When a child has a parent that is absent, they either do one of three things. They either go above and beyond, excelling at every single thing, trying to be the perfect child to one day receive the love and support and just adoration that they missed in their childhood. Two, they completely attach themselves to a substance, um, a toxic person, or some type of activity that completely sucks them dry. They will literally give that thing, that substance, that person their all, even though it's unhealthy, because they don't like the feeling of abandonment. They'll create a trauma bond with either a substance or a person. And because they don't like the feeling of abandonment, they'll do the best that they can, even when it doesn't make sense, to try to keep that dynamic alive. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. And then three, they completely shut down and give up at every turn because they just don't feel worthy. And I think the last one is exactly what I did. At the very beginning of the abandonment where I used to have communication with my father when I was like a baby up until nine years old when I was in the fifth grade and then up until that point where the communication just wasn't happening at all, I was so confused and heartbroken and my heart literally could not take it that I just completely shut down. I gave up. I did not want to do or care about anything. The heartbreak was so devastating to me that I didn't know how to process it and the only thing I felt like doing was nothing. Yeah, so I, it's like I appreciate my mom on such a deeper level because not only does she have to witness that, but even throughout the process, she never really told me the full, full truth until I was ready. She kind of just let life happen. And if a person wants to be in your life, they'll make the effort. If a man wants to be in your life, they'll make the effort. So the fact that there was no effort for so long and the fact that I was the one initiating for so many years, it was just like, no. Just stop. Hey, so if you made it to this part of the video, I just want to let you know that I'm going to be starting to talk about God a lot because God's presence throughout this journey was a major part of the healing process. And if that makes you feel uncomfortable, I understand. I don't want to force anything on you, but maybe, you know, fast forward or honestly, it's just going to be about God from here on out. So if that makes you feel uncomfortable, sorry, girl. I got to share my testimony. So. So I initiated contact with my father. I knew that because this journey to healing was for me and solely me, 
I needed to extend that olive branch, but I'm not gonna lie, in the early stages of me doing that, I felt extremely ashamed and like it was something I shouldn't be doing because here I was, like I was when I was a little girl, initiating contact with a grown-ass man who, at the time, I truly didn't feel was worthy of forgiveness. And I wasn't granted any extra armor or received any download of infinite wisdom to prepare me for this process of having contact with my father again for the first time after 10 plus years. But I was completely stripped of my pride and my ego. And I think that was the one thing that felt different for me in this process. Because years before actually initiating conversation, I did have dreams of like what it would be like if I spoke to my father again for the first time in years. And I would always create these beautiful curse out sessions of all of the things that I needed to say and all of the slight digs that I would say at the perfect time to make him feel the same amount of hurt that I felt because of his absence and it just it wasn't like that. I would also have these little whispers of questions like is the woman that I've become a daughter a father would be proud to have or is this version of me that he experiences would make him feel guilty and ashamed of all of the years spent of him not even being interested in my life? And slowly as the time approached for me to call him and us to have this major conversation, it just kind of subsided. I think I so desperately wanted to be obedient to what I feel like was God calling me to become the better version of myself that I for once had an intention that was bigger than me. It was for my legacy. I wanted to do something that would heal my womb so that my children wouldn't have to experience the same cycle of resentment towards men. Because did you know that like our trauma and our pain and all of this information gets stored in our womb for our children to one day maybe if or if not have to experience? Like that's a big deal. I feel a lot of women have the responsibility of healing all of these things. Even if the things aren't necessarily our situations to heal from, it affects us in some way or another. So generationally, if it didn't start with me, I wanted it to end with me some kind of way. Now, the conversation. This was big, you know, 10 plus years of not speaking at all. And the first one being everything that needed to be said. I really didn't know where to start. But I do remember myself being pleasant, articulate, and I was honestly lucky that he was at a place in his life where he was able to take accountability somewhat for the absence. But most importantly, I showed up as my higher self and curiosity overtook my feelings of pain and I was just honestly interested in the heart of a man that would abandon his child for so many years. So he gave me room to express myself and say everything that I couldn't say and what I could only say to him specifically for so many years of my life. For the first time, the heartbroken little girl in me was able to take the full front and exist and maybe cry and not have to necessarily be the bigger person because I had already been that for so many years when I agreed to just disappear from his life for so many years. I think that's an extremely important part of our realization of what needs to be healed. When an injustice happens, and it happens at our younger age, we create so much armor and protection around the version of ourselves that was hurt that we forget that under that layer of growth and protection that that version of ourselves still exists. And until we're able to peel back the layers to let that person heal, 
it still somehow exists within us and it shows up in the way that we handle pain and the way that we handle disappointment so in order to actually move forward and grow up we have to get to that version of ourselves and give them the ability to rest in this conversation with my dad one of his key points of the conversation was that he couldn't change the past but he wanted to move forward and i agreed um and we did and we talked more it wasn't a conversation every day maybe it was only twice a month it wasn't anything personal and i think he wanted more conversation but at the same time i am just that type of person and then that type of child i'm not a cold person i'll have a conversation with whoever i'm just not going to call all the time i don't even do that with my mom and that's who raised me my entire life i'm just so present in my everyday life that i just take it one day at a time you know and it's not that i don't care or anything like that but once a person has built a dynamic and i've grown up grown up not talking to that person for so many years it is normal that a person is just not used to talking to them or is not making it a priority and i think he understood that but in conversations with him they were mostly great conversations now i will say there were so many deep dives um that i wanted to get into just to know the real depth that my father had within him but I really wasn't able to get there and for a while that used to disappoint me but then I had to realize that I have to accept my father for who he is and I completely understand that and it also allowed me to see that this idea of my father that I had in my brain was much like the idea of my relationships romantically they were completely unrealistic and I think I did so well at creating this fantasy version of what I thought the relationship of my father would be that when I had conversations with him and I realized I just was not able to have that. I think in order for me to move forward, I created a version of myself that he would be able to have a conversation and a relationship with it wasn't necessarily all of me and i think as parents maybe with your dad and it's not supposed to be that way but i was such an open book and i wanted to learn so much from him that i was not able to when i left the door open for him to give me more of him he just didn't know how to do that and yeah i think the more that i did have a conversation with him i understood my mother's decisions a lot more and i completely understand her on a deeper level but also at the same time my heart cracked open a little bit more it's like i just wanted to accept him and see him the way god sees us and if god is willing to accept me for who i am why can't i not accept my father the man that literally brought me here the man whose dna i share and um, yeah, I saw things from a completely different perspective. And I think I could breathe a lot easier knowing that at the end of the day, I wanted a relationship. I got the relationship. I needed to have a conversation with my father. I became obedient. I did what it took. And I had that conversation and it took work, but I was proud of just how far I've come and then I just over the course of weeks and months of having great relationship with my father at this point it's been maybe a year that I had a solid consistent relationship with my father in a way that only we could have and I would just question myself or I would pray if god was pleased or if he was like proud of the amount of work that i had put in towards healing this relationship and for weeks i just i was just in hopes that i would receive some sign and some answer that my heavenly father was pleased with the way that i handled this dynamic with my earth father 
And I remember the first time that I heard God speak, I was in my apartment, my old apartment, alone. And I was having dinner at my little dinner table. And I just started to pray over my food. But this time, I did it in a way as if he was like sitting at the opposite end of my table. And I, my eyes were open. And it was like I was having a dinner party. And I was basically it was God's birthday and I was talking having this speech and like speaking of all of the things that I'm grateful for but most importantly expressing my gratitude for where the relationship with my father has gotten to you know I was finally able to have laughter with my father again and that was something that I never dreamed of having so I sealed my prayer and when I did that I could hear a voice in my ear say is that all my heart responded well yes of course you know I am just so thankful for being at this place in my awareness to have this level of love and acceptance and you were able to bring me to this part of my journey and I'm just extremely thankful like I am content with everything that you've given me so far and he asked why do you expect so little from me and I was silenced and I just felt myself like scrambling for words like well no no like I'm just content with everything that you've given me. I just want you to know how grateful I am. I'm just gracious that you are even present in my life enough to help mend this relationship that I feel like will change the trajectory of my life and the way that I think and I owe that all to you. And I know that you have the whole world to provide for. So I just want to let you know as your daughter, I am happy with you you in our relationship and he basically said you know jasmine you know you are my child i want you to experience all of me and i want you to ask for more and i just remember that night i fell asleep and i could just in my dream i was hovering over the earth i know this sounds crazy i was hovering over the earth and i could hear him say i want you to experience all of me i want you to ask for more and it was like he was showing me basically all of his power all that he is capable of everything within his reach i also am an heir to like it was the most amazing experience that I've ever had and I was completely different after that. I remember I told everybody that I loved, that I had this super profound experience with the divine and my father and like of course they thought I was a completely crazy but like until people are honest about the situations that happen that are super maybe metaphysical but just ultimately spiritual. That's what god wants is for us to be a little bit more transparent about what those experiences are because so i'm always going to be honest about that and that situation changed me so yes i woke up i was completely different it was like not only did i want more it was like i knew god wanted me to have more so that level of support behind just starting to ask for more wanting more it was like i had i was life was breathed into me and i had this just energy for life that i'd never had before so i started to do more i started to use my voice i started to want more but when i wanted more for myself i wanted more for my relationships I, and i wanted more for all of my relationships and i was given the permission so there was nothing stopping me but in order for me to see that I needed and wanted and really deserved more I wasn't able to get that and I'm telling you the minute that I asked for more which was the bare minimum in my relationship it hit the fan and it was always meant to and it's crazy when you realize how much you've settled for it makes you sick so the fact that 
I was in a process where I was healing all of these things and you would think that it should make you happy, but all it did was bring me disgust in everything that I chose, everything that I thought was love. And yeah, I wanted more for the relationship with my friends. I saw how much I allowed these weak ass people in my life to call me their friend when they were nothing but it. And when I, it's like after that experience, I was low key in a war. It was like I realized how much my life was a battlefield full of not necessarily my enemies, but full of people that were not in it with me. And thank God for revealing that for me with just a word. But any sign where my discernment was telling me this is not for me, I had to flush it out of my life. So spiritually, I was graduating and God was pleased with me. Like, I feel so emotional saying that. Like, I was one of the lucky ones where God actually showed me who he was and that he was actually happy with what I was doing and he granted me this breath of life to continue on. I asked for it, I got it. Crazy, right? So spiritually I was graduating but my physical life became on the rocks. The friends that I had for support, the friends that I had for years, the relationship that I had for years, my dynamics were falling apart, but they needed to fall apart because I was in something that wasn't necessarily healthy. I was building and planting seeds in soil that was not good, and I needed God to see that. So moving forward, when it came down to my dad, my earth father did such a good job at creating a dynamic where I couldn't ask him for anything that I mirrored that dynamic in my relationship with God. And because I felt so uncomfortable with asking for things, I truly felt that my dad maybe thought that I was greedy and thought that I wanted to use this relationship for him, with him so that I could ask him for something. And at this point, we had been great for maybe a year and a half. I'd never asked him for anything. Even if my life wasn't perfect and he would ask about it, he was never really jumping to help me. And I never felt anything about it because at this point, you know, I'm almost 30. I'm responsible for my life. I never blamed my father for situations in my life that had nothing to do with him, right? But at the same time, isn't it kind of weird that you are building a relationship with your father and he's still making sure you don't see him as that. So when it came down to God, I felt that it was kind of heartbreaking for him to want to give me a certain love that I closed myself off from receiving because I did not, my mind wasn't processing that I have a father that delivers. My mind wasn't really fully wrapped around everything that my father was capable of. I was limiting my heavenly father because my earth father was so limited in his ability to provide for me. And yeah, I can just, the way that God loves me, I can just feel his heart breaking for me a little bit. And um, that also changed everything. So life changed for me. It changed some more. I ended up moving. I got a new relationship. I fell in love. I moved. It was great, right? Um, I am in the process of getting a new car. So now this is fast forward. It had been a year and a half. I had this experience. It's now year three of me being cool with my dad. My dad has always known that I, I need to get a new car. I've had the same car for years, and in the heat, my car is unsafe to drive. Whatever, it's fine. I work, I was planning on working to get a car that I actually wanted, and with 
the summer being here, I was put in a situation where something happened to my car because of the heat and it made me feel unsafe to drive. So I actually was in a situation where everybody around me, my mother, my boyfriend, my friends, they were like, you need to ask your father for help because it just seems like this is like an only option for you. Just ask and see what he'll say. It was to a point like my mother and my boyfriend would get so upset because I felt so uncomfortable about asking him. I think deep down I knew maybe if I asked, things would go downhill. Maybe it was my intuition telling me that once I asked, and once I see this version, things will never be the same. And because I so desperately wanted to hold on to the view that I had of my father and him being, being okay with who he was, I didn't want to put myself through that. I emotionally could not handle that type of disappointment, right? So it was like the last straw. It was March 15th. I remember the week before that, it was a situation with my car where when I'm driving and I'm at a stoplight, my car will completely cut off on me. And I will have to do whatever I do, try to pray and do all of the things for it to cut back on so I can actually drive forward. And it's completely not safe. It happens also when I'm coming out of a parking lot. If I'm waiting for other cars to pass by, my car will completely stop in damn near the middle of the road. Okay, it's not fun for me. Anyway, I called my dad and I said, hey, you know, I've been experiencing things with my car. I know you know that I've been in the process, but right now, because of the situation that happened with me last week, I just truly feel unsafe. Can I receive your help? I'll go half. I'll pay you back. I just need something that's safe right now. And, um... I said, take, you know, I understand that may be a lot to ask from you. I just wanted to extend that and let you know that I was in need of help because this is just really my only option. So just please let me know if you can or if you can, I'll, I'll be here. He told me that, um, okay, well, I'll ask my wife and then I'll get back to you. Now his wife... This is a woman who, throughout the process of us rekindling our relationship, we've never had a conversation. So in the three years of us getting to know each other again, there's never been a moment where she said, oh, I'd like to have a conversation with her. This is your daughter. Let's talk. Like, let me meet her. And she also has a daughter that's five years old. So... I didn't really say anything to that, but I understand you have a partnership with another person. You want to have a conversation with them before you do anything. So I get that. Now again, I said that was March 15th. It is now July 2nd. So in between that time, I was waiting for a text message, a call, an email, something I think I was expecting for him to say that he just could not help me. When a person asks for help, they know that there's a strong possibility that that person just cannot help you. Like, I'm, I'm, I know when people ask me for help and I can't help, I'm sorry, baby, I can't help you. But I'm going to let you know that I think the fact that my father hadn't said anything for so many months, it just like... As the days went by, as the weeks went by, as the months went by, I'm just like, wow. I just started to feel like kind of how I did when I was a, a little girl again, and my dad kind of chose to just stop talking to me. And I think because there were so... Remember when I talked to you about the version of yourself, um that needs to be healed underneath the layers of protection and things like that. Because through conversations with my dad, I started to be more vulnerable, right? Those layers of protection in the process of getting to my father again kind of subsided. I didn't realize how vulnerable I left that version of me until she became disappointed again. And it really, it just broke me. And I was, I, I it's like that, 
I think was God because I needed to learn how to move on and move forward when I am disappointed. And even when I had conversations with my father, the reason why the conversations went so well for him and for me is because I created a version of myself that was no longer able to be disappointed by him, truly. And when I got real and God gave me the space to really start asking for what I wanted and when I was given the permission to live in a full existence, I was put in a position where I had to see whether I, people would show up or not. And when it came to my father, him constantly dropping the ball, it did break me. I remember even having the conversation with my mom about it. I kind of lashed out at her a little bit because I so desperately did not want her to be right. And I thought that this journey to healing and just actually accepting him and the love that my mom actually truly didn't understand in the very beginning, I thought that that would, he was learning something from that. I thought that that would have changed something for the better. And just my mom being able to know him much better than I knew him and for so many years and the fact that she was right it just completely disappointed me and then i had to realize that like all of this work and this healing and this growth and this learning and this development of my heart and my soul and my spirit and this love and acceptance it's not for anybody else but me i can't expect him to learn all of these lessons or know how to show up for me when for so many years it's not like he just learned how to do it when i had a conversation with him like I said, there were so many conversations that I wanted to have with him that he couldn't even have. So this expectation that I had of my father was, again, not something that I needed to have. And in order for me to fully see him, love, and accept him like God accepts all of us, I have to learn how to let go. And that that or this is the level of forgiveness and the love that I think God has always wanted me to have from the very beginning, even when things were great, even when things were unsure, even when I kept asking these questions, it was this amount of pain. It was this amount of development that I feel like God wanted me to have before the end of my life, before we meet. And yeah, I'm just so much more open to, I guess, the dynamics of relationship and maybe parenthood on such a deeper level. You know, I am not a parent, but I do understand, you know what, it's hard on every level. I can't judge anybody's decision and how they choose to raise their children or not. It's like, I've never been in that position. I can't judge, right? So what I can say is once you start to see, accept, and love people the way that God sees, loves, and accepts us, once you experience the level of pain and disappointment and heartbreak that comes with acceptance and truly feeling it in your heart, are you able to actually feel okay? And I know that sounds backwards, but before this whole situation with my car, I thought I had it all figured out. I thought I knew more than my mom. Like, oh girl, trust me, I'm on this healing. I'm enlightened. I'm spiritual, girl. I'm, I'm, I'm all of these things, but it's like, no. Nah. Like, I felt, I had to fall flat on my face in order to really heal. Yeah. I had to fall off of this cliff in this journey in order to be fully carried and accepted and had by God. And I know that if my dad decides to call me, I'll answer and I'll be already provided for and it'll be fine. Um, I don't even think he thought far ahead enough to know how much his choice to not say anything to me, how it would have affected me, even as an adult woman. 
but I just know the importance of a present father and because I thought I had that and when I realized when I actually needed it I didn't have it it hurt but I'm not going to allow it to harden me and I think having this real conversation about what my experience is with parenthood and how I'm, I'm not allowing my parents to steer my life in a way that whatever they did to me, good or bad, is not going to result in how I choose to live out my life is extremely important. Um, I love both of my parents. My mom on such a different level because she was my sole provider. She was my sole parent, you know, she actually did the work. So there's that, but at the end of the day, I am no longer allowing my father's decisions to affect how I treat all men because they don't deserve that. You know, there are some great fathers out there um, my future husband, the man that I marry, is going to be a great father to our children. And I'm just blessed that now I have the lesson and I have the experience of life to know the difference. I know what to watch for. And I think that's really all you can ask for. So yeah, thank you so much for allowing me to express that. Let me know where you're at in your journey. If, you know, you're in a process of healing one of your abandoned parents or if healing isn't even an option and you don't have the luxury of maybe having the conversation if um, they're here or if they're not spiritually if you have to have the relationship that way um, let me know where you're at with it or let me know if there's anything that I said that resonated with you I'd love to hear it um, do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, share audio with anybody that you feel like would resonate with this video. Thank you so much for your time, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.